What is up everyone? Renfail here. Hopefully you're doing well. And I'm finally ready to give a review of No Man's Sky. Now before I do, it's worth noting that I have not completed the game. <laughs> I don't think there's any such thing as completing this game. Uh, after having played this for the last few weeks as a first time player and meeting hundreds of people who have come to the streams and on the videos who have said they have thousands of hours in this game. I'm genuinely feeling like this is one of those titles that you could play for years and never realistically see the end of it. Um, although you could theoretically finish story content and stuff, but there's an infinite number of you know, star systems to explore, planets to explore, and so you know, it, it kind of depends on what your flavor of No Man's Sky is. But there's a lot to do. So I have a main save that has 65 hours in it, and I have done the most recent expedition, which was Liquidators, which was about 11 hours. So I've got about 75 hours into the game, which I feel like is enough time now to make a realistic review of the game. Worth noting is that I have not finished the main storyline. If you watch the stream, I'm recording this on Sunday. I don't even know what date, what the date today is. Um, this will be airing on Monday, so I played this yesterday morning for the stream. Um, for those of you who are interested, I am streaming on Monday mornings at uh, 5 a.m. Central Time is the current schedule for No Man's Sky. Um, we're doing it once a week right now because it's no longer the mainstream because we've moved on to Star Wars Outlaws and Space Marine 2 and Shattered Space DLC. we got a whole bunch of stuff lined up for the next six months. Um, but um, I did finish yesterday, the, what, well, this morning, um, the Purge. I finally got to the end and I figured out kind of the main story. The next goal here is to get to the center of the universe and restart the simulation, essentially. Um, and, and go from there. So there is a little bit of story left that I haven't seen, and there, of course, is tons of secondary missions and a bunch of stuff that I haven't done in the game. So, first and foremost, let me start by saying um, it is rare for a game to come along and bring to me a sense of enjoyment um, when it's an older title, as is the case with this game. Um, this is an eight-year-old title as of my recording. I came into this game after the Worlds Update Part 1, and I understand that Worlds Update Part 2 is coming. This is... What, what primarily got me interested was the idea of them taking tech from Light No Fire, which is a game that I'm, you know, I was moderately interested in because it's a fantasy game, um, and I knew that I knew that Hello Games had built something special with No Man's Sky, but I had never really given this game a shot because I was too busy when it came out, and then when I tried it a few years ago, I had a bad experience with the ship getting blown up, and I couldn't figure stuff out, and it was probably a bug, but I only did three hours, and I was like, it's not for me. But then I saw the World's Update Part 1, and I went, holy crap, um, I gotta check this out, and I'm so glad I did, because every time I've like turned a page in the book of No Man's Sky, I have found myself going, oh my goodness, this is really, really cool. Now, let's just say, out of the gate, I can tell you what my review is. It's an 8 out of 10. Maybe even an 8.5 out of 10. There are some things I don't really like, um, but they're mostly little things that I would consider to be nitpicks like personal things that take away from my personal experience in the game um, and they are in no way a reflection of the game being bad in those areas so subjective opinion being what it is here um, the game is absolutely breathtaking um, I was genuinely kind of taken back by that I didn't expect it to look this good you know especially with the world's part one update I play largely in first person but I do like the look of my character model um, and this is just like the base you know what I started off with I haven't really changed anything um, I really like it um, I did come across uh, my um, ship the other day I got this uh, exotic class s ship which has a really cool configuration um, of supercharged slots out of the box um, I haven't finished fleshing this out there's a lot to do here um, so let me just kind of go down the list of the things that I really like about this game and then I'll talk about the things that I'm a little on the fence about um, and we'll go from there so first and foremost the fact that you can go anywhere and explore is just really really cool matter of fact let's just take off and go take a look at some of this stuff um, 
I have been kind of blown away by the nature of the way the procedural tech works in this game. Now, obviously, there are limitations to it. You do kind of notice the procedural aspect of it after you've landed on 15, 20 different planets. But you do have to land on quite a few of them before you start to notice that it's like, oh. Um, but by the way, this is the storyline showing up. <laughs> the Alice is dying and wants me to reset it to plunge myself through its interface at the center of the galaxy. But to do this may reset the world, my life, and all that I know. I don't know if I can do it. Um, I'm going to say uh, seek the final interface. So that's going to be what we go work on next time we play, which is going to be next Sunday for those of you who want to be here. Um, so um, let's go down here to this planet. And I appreciate the novelty of landing on planets and taking off from planets. I don't want to do it every single time. And this is one of the areas where I'm very happy that Starfield provides me with a fast travel option to be able to not have to deal with this every single time on my ship. However, the first few times you do this, just watching the tech and the way this unfolds, ooh, we got a landing something right here. Um, now this is kind of a boring looking planet, although we have a cool looking rainbow over here, uh, but it looks kind of barren. Um, we've got some really uh, cool other planets which we can go explore. I've got some bases built on other planets. Uh, matter of fact, why don't we go take a look at, um, well, I know one of the things we can do. We can go to the anomaly um, and check this out because I have found base building in this game to be one of the more enjoyable aspects of gameplay and I've never really gotten into base building too much in other games although I do love housing in my MMOs um, but the landing and taking off of planets there is an aspect of that while that mechanical part of it does get a little old to me what does not get old is the continual exploration of new places and the discovery of looking at things and going oh this looks cool and the all the different types of planets that you can see and find and with the new update the world's update part one the the new technology for the waters and the sunsets and everything else I'm, gonna, I'm hoping it's going to be daylight at the place we're about to go to um i've got a base over here on ice ice baby this is my most recent um discovery um, which is an ice planet, which I was inspired when I was watching one of Beeblebum's streams. He was talking about his, his love of icy planets. And I came across this one. I went, oh, I totally get why he said that. Because this place looks really, really, really cool. Um, and, of course, there's all these different types of planets. There's caustic planets. There's barren planets. There's desert planets. There's, you know, paradise planets. Ocean planets. There's all these different types of planets that you can go and explore. And that's one of the aspects of the game that is beyond simply the storyline. Because you can go explore places like this um, and see things like this, which I think is really, really cool. So we're going to go ahead and take off here and take a peek at what this place looks like from the air. Um, because I do really think that it's pretty cool. Considering with the new water technology... Um, this is this uh, like icy planet I found, which is largely an ocean planet, but you can find these islands scattered throughout. Um, and I found a bunch of crater islands where you can potentially build different things. And I just love the look of this. This place looks really cool. And then we've got this ringed um, planet up in the background. Um, so the discovery process is a lot of fun, but what I didn't even know existed in the game until the other day was, um, let's go into third person mode for my ship, and then we're gonna go over here and we're gonna turn, and as we're turning, we're gonna go to photo mode. Because I didn't even know that this was a thing um, that you could do until the other day when we were on the live stream and then this once I got into this and I realized there's all these different tools that you can use to like show different f like like okay so here's here's just just work with me here for a second like let's say I want to uh, bring this 
down here and get that view of the planet up in there with something back in the background. Um, so there's all these filters that you can apply. You can change time of day, fog density, cloud level, vignette, bloom. There's all of these different filters which add different looks to everything, which is absolutely crazy in terms of taking you know, different pictures. But then there's also, let me find it here. Like we can come in here and, and, and not only that, but also one of the things I found fascinating was like being able to move the sun around so that you could say, I want it to be dark. I want it to be sunset. Like let's, let's move this around with that look in the background and that planet back up in there. And I'm going to move this forward and we're going to bring this down and we've got the trails and I could leave it like this, but I could also tilt, you know, so we can get a completely different look if we wanted to. And then we can go back in here to the filters and just start messing around with all these different filters. And when I saw this and I was like, this is crazy, the different things you can do with the photos. Um, and then I started seeing Sean Murray post all these different screenshots um, on his Twitter account, his X account. And I was like, okay, now I'm beginning to understand what is the draw for people who really love the idea of space exploration um, and being able to go take really cool screenshots, not just here, but also in space. Because it's not just this, like the fact that you can then, hold on, I gotta get back into first person here real quick because it drives me nuts. Third person is like one of those things. Um, because we can go up into the atmosphere here. Actually, let's land. Because there's something I want to do here. Because this gets into another aspect of the game that is really mind-boggling to me. Um, somebody joked during the stream the other day that my review for 100 hours is going to be about how I was sidetracked for 100 hours. And I think there's a line up here because my green screen's not perfect. And I apologize, everybody. Cats running around. Um, let's summon my freighter up there so it's up beyond the cloud cover you can barely see the silhouette of my my freighter we can go up into my freighter and then we'll go explore that really quick because that's a whole aspect of the game where you have this mobile base this is your freighter. oh by the way my fleet that I've been recruiting because there's a whole fleet based system um, there's starship combat, there's combat on the ground, and like your multi-tool can be all these different types of weapons as well as your harvesting tool and everything else. Quick commercial break everyone to celebrate and give thanks to all of these amazing people who keep me on the air full time. Really appreciate the support. All you got to do is join as a member. You get access to private videos. You can also do super thanks on any upload or super chats and stickers on any live stream or premiere you see. And beyond that, don't forget we're multi-streaming over on Twitch now so you can support over there as well. Thanks so much to everybody. Let's get back to the video at hand. But this leads to this whole other aspect of gameplay where, so there's exploration, there's the harvesting element. Everything you're doing in this game is about harvesting and crafting. So like you open up your inventory and you know we go into the exosuit and I've got all these resources. You're gonna use all these resources for things. But there's all these mods and all these mods can be um, tweaked to the way that you wanna play. There's different types of weapon mods that you can add there's all these jetpack mods you can add to give you more jetpack time boost. Like, I've literally taken off a planet in my jetpack and gone into space on low gravity planets, which is absolutely insane to think about. And then going into um, here, like, the fact that I have, you can have up to 12 ships in your personal squadron. Um, and then outside of that, you can have 30 fleet, 30 ships in your fleet. So I was, I've made a few videos on, like, getting addicted to... Um, um, ship collections in this game like this is my Viper which goes along with the, the theme of this being like a Battlestar ship and then over here is like my Explorer that I was using for a while um, until I got the S-Class um, and then this whole freighter which I can go up to and we have a uh, the bridge and we can send off missions and, and they bring me back resources and all kinds of other stuff um, but there's also beyond this right here 
is just going to the various planets that you find in building bases, which I talked about briefly earlier. So, I kind of find it hard to nail down exactly what this game is, because it's a lot of different things. It's sort of, at its core, it's like a harvesting crafting game, right? Because when you start off the game, everything is about crafting. You have to get resources to make your suit work. But then there's like creative modes. So you can turn all that off so that you don't have to do that if you don't want to play with the survival mode on. There's all the difficulty options that you can tweak. You can have permadeath if you would like. Um, there are community bases that people build. There's the base that you're going to build. There's portable bases. There's all the vehicles that you can have beyond the ships like the the mech that you can run around in or the underwater Nautilin submarine. Um, you know, all these different things that you can use are on the planets. The different planets and weather types. The fact that the water now with the world's update part one, the, the waves get bigger and smaller depending on the weather and the tide goes in and out and it's just crazy to think about how all this stuff works. So, crafting, harvesting, survival at its core, building bases is another aspect of the game, collecting all the pieces to build the types of bases you want to build, getting into the starship collections, building your own starship by getting parts from other vessels and scrapping them out, fleshing out your freighter, there's many different types of freighters that you can find, getting different fleet vessels, different types of fleet vessels that you can have, the different types of missions that you can run with your fleet. Um, there's the storyline, there's the secondary missions, like I found like, as an example, there's this, um, um, where's it at? The settlers. Like, I found a planetary settlement, and they want me to become, like, the mayor, and I can, like, manage the city. Which I never even dove into that. Um, I haven't finished a lot of these quests right here. Um, I have been working on the main quest, and I'm not finished with them yet. I kind of figured, um, next Sunday I'll finish this one, and we'll reset the simulation and kind of see what the culmination of that is. But I would anticipate that it's probably going to be around 100 hours before I am finished with all the things that I initially want to see in the game. And then, once that happens, uh, probably by the time I get to that point, they're going to be dropping World's Update Part 2, which I understand... I don't, I don't know what's in there, but I understand from the rumors it's going to have things like deeper oceans and some base building stuff in it, perhaps. Um, I don't know. We're all kind of waiting to see what that's going to have in it. But there's a lot coming down the pipeline that is going to add additional things to the game. And then they have the seasonal activities, which are the expeditions, which I, I reviewed the Liquidators expedition. Um, it it had a lot going on, and, and it shows you what in-game gear can look like, which is really cool for me because it helped me understand how the mod system and all the adjacent tech stuff works. Um, and I got a really cool multi-tool out of it and some cosmetic things from a mech. Um, but um, there's those, and you get, like, different... You can get ships and parts and all these cosmetic things. This is just the overwhelming part of the game to me, is there's just a lot going on. Now, I can talk briefly about the negatives of the game to me. And again, these are nitpicks, not actual, you know, flaws that I think are game-breaking. So, I really dislike the, the ground combat in this game, because I suck at aiming. I like aim assist, and if a game doesn't give me aim assist, I immediately don't like the combat. When I played Starfield the first time on the Xbox, it did not have aim assist, and I did not like the gunplay. When they added aim assist in the May 15, 2024 update, I then did a second playthrough and went, oh my god, I love the gunplay now, I love the gun combat, because it helped me, because I don't, I'm not good at aiming on a console. Um, so that kind of takes away from it for me. The storyline is good if not you know there are a couple of areas where it's a little cliched but um i kind of was able to predict where the story was going pretty early on um and that's probably just because i've read so much sci-fi watched so much sci-fi and i've kind of was able to, to divine where it was going i haven't been 100 percent sure but i've been about like 90 percent you know accurate on, on the things i've seen so far um I much prefer cinematic narrative RPGs as opposed to unvoiced, unmocapped. Um, and this is where, when you start to visit all the space stations, you start to see sort of the procedural NPCs, and they kind of all look the same, even though they're kind of different. Um, the tech is really cool, but you do start to see those little things creep through after you've seen 50 of the NPCs. Um, the way you can learn languages is really interesting, 
but also is kind of like, eh, is it really, you know, that's not something that I want to spend thousands of hours doing, trying to unlock all the languages. So there are little things that took me out of it, but giving a game an 8.5, you gotta, you gotta think about that for a minute. That's, you know, anything above an 8 is an excellent game. So this was an excellent game for me, and I am looking forward to going to 100 hours and potentially beyond as I continue to play this game throughout 2024 and looking forward to the world's update part 2. And of course, Light No Fire Beyond, because this game has me really interested in Hello Games now. I went back and watched the uh, the Ingoodening of No Man's Sky this, that a bunch of the community recommended to me, and that was a lot of fun to watch and see how far the company's come since the early days of this game um, and see where it is now in 2024. So my review as a a new player having never played this game for the first time is that it's definitely worth your money um, there is a lot to do here easily hundreds if not thousands of hours of entertainment if this is the type of game that's going to hold your attention I think for me I kind of was this was one of the things that I was throwing at the wall to see if it stuck about a month ago because as a variety streamer I just throw lots of things at the wall and some things do well other things don't you you go hard on the ones that do and the other ones you just kind of give them their 10 15 hours and you move on to other things um, and this was one of those ones that hit it off pretty good and I, I will also say and I've made a, a separate video about this that the community has been a part of why I've had so much fun because um, for the first time in my history of growing as a streamer and content creator you know I'm I'm going to be three it'll be three years in in february so i'm a little over two and a half years right now but doing this full time and i've had big games small games we do this a lot because that's just the nature of variety streaming i've never gotten kingmaker slot on twitch before and i've gotten the kingmaker slot three times now while streaming no man's sky because the community has turned up in droves to watch me play and to help out and it's been incredibly amazing to be a part of that and i can kind of understand now why this game has the community it has after eight years um because of that and i want to also again give a shout out to people bum because he has shared a whole bunch of tips um everybody has you know we've lord lord has shared a bunch of tips but there's been a lot of great people sharing lots of great tips you know brett and other people um but people bum for some of the base building stuff and like the other day when we had the little bug we encountered in the walkthrough i really appreciate everybody coming out and saying hey man thanks for being a tourist in our game and enjoying it hope you have fun here's all this stuff um so that's made made the difference for me um I am moving away from this as the mainstream game that you know it got its three weeks in the spotlight and now I'm moving on to other things we have Star Wars Outlaws Space Marine 2 um, Shattered Sky coming up in September um, and August into September and of course we have the next six months already booked out I do plan on continuing No Man's Sky on Sunday mornings at 5 a.m. Central as long as we keep getting an audience showing up for that um, so far the last couple of weekends doing that it's been going pretty good so hopefully we'll see you there and I do look forward to continuing the things I want to see and do because I do want to finish the storyline I want to finish fleshing out my freighter I want to be able to have that mobile base I want to build a base on that ice planet I want to build a base on I want to build an underwater base I want to want to see what the world's part two update brings because if we're bringing deeper oceans then I'm really going to want to build an underwater base um, and I'm looking forward to all of that stuff so hopefully we'll see you in the next video as I continue to play this game and plug away at building up my own hundreds of hours in no man's sky uh, if you want to watch the live streams they happen daily at 11 a.m central for the main games and then i do a lot of different stuff outside of that you know no man's sky on sunday mornings and then right now we're doing lord of the rings online on uh, monday nights at 6 p.m and then uh, world of warcraft on wednesdays and saturdays at 6 p.m central as well so hopefully we'll see you in one of those and until then everybody stay safe happy gaming and thanks again for tuning into my no man's sky content cheers